Terry here, D-Lab, and I've been tasked with repairing this Johnson Valiant transmitter, which I don't mind, because I love working on the Johnson radios. This one has multiple issues. It was purchased years ago, and the new owner never tested it. So he brought it to me to go through this transmitter before he puts it on the air. And I found multiple issues. In this video, we're going to cover faulty modulation circuit. So hopefully, we'll identify the issues, and I'll show you how to fix it. Here we go. Here's my grid current. I'll go over here to plate. I'm on 40 meter band. So she'll dip. That's good. Let's check the modulator. Oh, that's not good. So the modulator current is pegging out. So either we have an issue with the modulator tubes, or perhaps the negative bias is not present, or it could be the modulator pot on the side of the Valiant, which are known for failure. So, let's take a look. Here we are bottom side on the Valiant. You can see the high voltage caps here. Been in there a while, those need to be changed. There's your push to talk relay. But what we're interested in right now is the modulation section, which is up here, okay? So you can see the filter caps here are also original, and that's bad news, especially for the negative bias that needs to go to that modulator. Now the modulator pots are up here, right? So he's hidden back there, and you can see that one's not original. So let's throw a meter on it. I've got my Beckman meter hanging in here on the chassis, and we're monitoring across the pot. Now if you look at your schematic, one side of the modulator pot goes to ground, so that's where my meter is, and I'm going to the high side of the pot. I've got about uh, a little over 4K. According to the schematic, it should be 5. So now I'm going to move the lead to the wiper arm of the pot. Let's see what we got. 2.6 something ohms. I look at that over there. I'm moving the pot now. And she's cutting out. So either the pot's extremely dirty or it's baked because this appears to be a one watt pot and the schematic shows a two watt pot and it has been replaced. So my guess is the pot is fried. So I get in here and uh, try to clean it first but I'm sure that won't work. So the next step would be change the pot. All right, well, good news. I hit the pot with some Deox. I'm going to spin it now. And look at there. It should dial in. And I did verify the pot. It is actually a 2-watt ohmite. So it should be okay for the job. So let's fire it back up and see if that bias will adjust. All right, we're fired back up. There's my grid. Let's make sure the plate is tuned. Yep. Let's go to that modulator. I've got my screwdriver ready. Let's see if we can adjust that current. That would be a negatory. I don't like to leave them on very long because I don't want to damage the tubes or the modulation transformer. So the next step would be to check negative bias going to that pot, see if it's present. If it's not, it's either the rectifier diode, because in this case they actually pulled out the rectifier tube. There's a diodes in its place. And if that's not it, then it's probably those capacitors, because they look all dried up and crunchy. So back underside we go. There's my negative bias going to the modulator tubes. You can see I have about negative 38 and I'm going to adjust the pot. And it does adjust. So I'm going to put this thing at maximum negative bias. And that should hold those tubes down, I hope. I'm going to watch that level. I'm going to key this thing up. So you get to see what I get to see. Here we go. So a nose dives, and my current on the meter is actually not pegged anymore. 
but it's not uh, it's not for the proper current. Now I'm gonna see if it'll adjust. It does adjust. So I have excessive current. But I gotta check and see if negative 50 volts is correct. I suspect that's too low. All right, so I misspoke. The 6BY5 negative bias rectifier tube is present. What has been solid stated is the tube behind it, which used to be a 5V4. That was a low voltage rectifier tube. So now I'm monitoring the voltage coming right off of that negative bias tube, and it's supposed to be, according to the schematic, 264 volts. And I've got 214. So if you look at the old schematic, there we are. There's a bias rectifier I'm monitoring right here and it's low and that goes to these two filter caps which are old and crusty and original. So my guess is these caps are bad and that's why my DC level's low. So I'm gonna change the caps and we'll see if that bias will adjust then. All right, so the plan of attack here, we're gonna change out this dual cap and this dual cap. They're both rated the same. They're 15 microfarads at 450 volts it's C93 A and B and C98 A and B. So keep in mind now these are 450 volt caps. You don't have to put in 450 volt caps, right? Because you're only looking at around 260 volts applied. So what I'm going to change them out with is these 22 microfarad radials at 400 volts. And as you can see, they're nice small caps. So they'll tuck in right on the tube sockets and free up some space under here. So there's the old caps, been removed, new ones have been mounted up. I put these on terminal boards to make the installation easier and more secure. So we're all wired up, I'm going to double check it and fire it back up, see if we can adjust that modulator bias. Very important note, make sure on your negative bias tube caps that you put those positive lines to ground. Don't flip those or you're going to have a disaster on your hand. All right, here we go. Flip her on. Get my screwdriver on that modulator adjust. And you can see I can adjust her just like it's supposed to. So we'll set it at about 60 mils. All right, here's the post repair checkout after repairing the modulation section on the Johnson Valiant. First off, tweak in my grid, go to plate, make sure it's dipped, and go over here to modulation. There's my modulator current, about 70 mils. Got the audio all the way down. Gonna take the old microphonium here, advance it up a little bit. There we go. Lots of modulation. I can actually hear myself coming out of the mod transformer, so she's good and healthy. Let's take a look at my plate. <whistles> Hanging right in there. So we have a good working Valiant on AM mode. So next, let's go into this thing and see what else we can find wrong with it. So a fairly simple repair to the modulation section of the Johnson Valiant. A couple easy steps to follow and you can track it down. If you have one of these transmitters and it's acting like this, don't keep running it. You're gonna fry your modulator tubes or at worst, you could eat that modulation transformer and that'd be a real bummer. So if you have one of these, you open it up, you see those old crusty filter caps, change them. Don't even think twice about it. A couple of dollars worth of parts and it'll save you hundreds of dollars and a lot of misery in the future. I hope this video was good for you, and there will be more to come on the Johnson Valiant Repair from D-Lab. See ya. 73's from D-Lab Electronics, N6TLU, at the helm, testing 1, 2, 3, 4.